Hello, Ethan. Thank you so much for keeping us company again. This is OI254. Why in the morning is the show you're watching? And I thank you for being part of this conversation. We are talking about the state of Kenya's public debt that is a ballooning. What are we looking forward into? So much is going to happen in the country. Just last week or two weeks ago, we saw um, our president secure another um, package to help us build our infrastructure. How does that impact you as the taxpayer in this country? I'm speaking to economists here. I have Job Mugira and Jonah Mukundi. Thank you so much for availing yourself, gentlemen, and coming. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Karibuni San. I want, to, I want to begin with your job yes. in regards to the state of Kenya's public debt. And we know every country, like I have seen, especially during this COVID-19, when uh, things went south in terms of economy, every country went to borrow money either from abroad or within. And we saw it happen even in our banks here. I have seen some of the bankers say uh, things are not OK. What, what, do you, what do you make of our current state in terms of uh, debt? Well, our debt is big. That is what I can say. We've borrowed mm -hmm. more than uh, we are probably likely to afford paying to service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, in terms of uh, the pandemic, I'll say we didn't borrow more than the way we normally borrow. Mm -hmm. If you look at the figures, the way we borrowed in... Uh, the last half year of uh, 1920, mm -hmm. it's the same way we borrowed in the first uh, half of uh, financial year 2020-2021. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we didn't borrow more because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. In the same breath, Jonah, we borrowed for the health purposes in the construction industry. Vitu zimekuaji with the debt that we have. How, how are things in the construction industry? Well, <coughs> what I can say is that um, things are not very right, yes, because uh, we expect every money borrowed to have a, a not an income mm -hmm. generated towards the economy positively. Mm -hmm. So if you borrow too much, and there are no ret the, the, the returns, we expect to have some good returns mm -hmm. by the end of it all. If we borrow and build the road. And then uh, by the end of it all, some of the money is not accounted. Mm -hmm. By the end of it all, we will be required to pay the debt. True. If we have borrowed one billion, and the amount accounted is 200 billion, mm -hmm. or we borrow one million and we account for, two, for 200 million, or for or like some percentage is not accounted, mm -hmm. that means we are going to pay money that is not used. And that means the cost goes to taxpayer. Exactly. <coughs> All right. Now, Job, how does, how does public debt affect economic growth in consideration with the, whether the debt is a means of a burden on economy? Having a, a review or a systematic review in regards to how does it affect the economy? Well, I think uh, just allow us to break debt down into what common manainchi or even the youths Mm -hmm. in their small economies can understand. Mm -hmm. Debt can do two things to an economy. It can help you improve an economy, mm -hmm. it can help you, it can de help you kill the economy. Mm -hmm. That is, ineza kukusaidia ama ineza kukumaliza. True. Uh, le let's take, for example, uh, the issues of HELB. HELB, it's a, de a kind of a debt that vijana uh, wanajua sana. Most of them who have been in colleges and universities know about HELB. Mm -hmm. There are people who prospered because of HELB. Mm -hmm. They completed their studies. Others, I know someone who are here bought a plot using HELB. <laughs> and <Wisdom>. then <laughs> there are those who are killed by HELB in this Nairobi city. Mm -hmm. And uh, had they not received that debt, they would be okay. Now, that is the money directly killed them or messed their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> sorry. Then now, when it came to repayment, some people are not able to repay their help. Penalties went up. Some were not uh, genuinely able to pay. Others, 
it's just because of poor management. Mm -hmm. You didn't use your money well. And as a result, uh, things didn't go well. Now, when it comes to public debt, it's just like any other debt. Private debt, individual debt, emshwari, emkopa. Emkopa is not a type of debt. Uh, emshwari, <laughs> there is tala, fuliza, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is exactly uh, the same way uh, the public debt is. It's only that now in public debt, mm -hmm. it's the government borrowing on our behalf. We are mostly, we are not consulted. Mm -hmm. But in Whether individual we like debt, it or not. Yeah. Yes. In individual debt, <laughs> you consult yourself. Unajiambia na itaji nifulize kama ni the umbili, nifanya one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Now, for you to develop a country, especially the heavy infrastructural projects, mm -hmm. you need debt. But now, as uh, my fellow economist here said, if you borrow, you must use transparently and you must account for everything that you borrow. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, then the economy will dip. And this is how the economy will dip. Mm -hmm. You borrowed uh, 2 million shillings. You are supposed to do a road for 2 million. And now instead you do a loan for 1 million and then another 1 million disappears somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now the rate of returns from the 1 million road will be less than what was expected from the 2 million road. True. So now, uh, the economy to grow, there are so many factors that uh, contribute to the GDP. Mm -hmm. Then it means you will have to get some uh, sources of revenue that were not meant for paying the debt mm -hmm. to go and service the one million that mm -hmm. was never pumped into the economy. Mm -hmm. So you're killing some sectors of the economy because their contribution will not be realized in the national uh, GDP mm -hmm. uh, to go and service some debt that we never used. So debt can uh, improve the economy. When mismanaged, it can kill the economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, John, I remember one time the president say, I, I think sometimes in 2018, he said when he goes out to borrow money for this country and for the purposes of infrastructure, mm -hmm. he will do it. And I remember he was having an interview on one of the local stations and he was adamant like, yes, I have to. Because the questions were, you mm. are borrowing too much. Mm. But we're having so many corrupt, corruption cases in our country. Mm. But the statement is, I will borrow. For the sake of infrastructure, mm. I will borrow. Mm. Now, looking back, of back three years, things that have happened in our country, mm -hmm. would you see, just like you had mentioned, the money that can, Kenya has been borrowing from abroad, we have used it in the right way? And if yes, to what percentage? I may not be able to tell to what percentage, mm -hmm. but uh, we have not used the money that we have borrowed wisely. Uh, for instance, mm -hmm. we all know that uh, Commercial loans are expensive than the loans borrowed from multilateral bodies like IMF and the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Why could Kenya, a developing country, borrow from commercial loans? Borrow from, from commercial loans instead of borrowing the, the, from multilateral bodies like IMF and the, the World Bank, mm -hmm. which their terms are better. Mm -hmm. if I offer you a loan at an interest of 4%. And the other person offers you at 10%, mm -hmm. you would automatically opt to go for the 4%, mm -hmm. which is in terms we have a better deal. So I don't, I, I don't agree that uh, we are using the. I, I don't, I disagree mm -hmm. because um, in the first place we should. Currently we are borrowing more commercially. Mm -hmm. We should shift back to the multilateral bodies, which mm -hmm. give them better better options mm -hmm. for, for because we have to pay either way mm -hmm. and then all money borrowed should be accounted by the end of the se borrowing season mm -hmm. so we are we, sh we have to create a very good uh, um, channel to monitor every coin if the president is going to borrow to, uh, for instance um, 10 billion mm -hmm. how much do we need for the for the specific project that the project the the, the, the government is targeting, mm -hmm. if we need uh, five billion, why should we borrow eight eight billion? Mm -hmm. You see, and in case this uh, eight billion that we need, or we need the five billion, why can't we borrow from 
the border is that are cheaper than uh, that that are cheaper that is a better deal true mm. now job you have mentioned uh, actually i want to throw the same question to you uh, in terms of uh, how we have been using our debt and you just uh, spoke of uh, the economic growth. now the do, can we see the public uh, the, the public debt so far has uh, stimulated our economy and for the sake of infrastructure the president say he will borrow well if i were the president hmm. i would still say i will borrow <laughs> but now I, w one thing uh, that i would like to say is uh, the president as economic advisors at the treasury Mm -hmm. who advise the cabinet secretary and in turn advise the president. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, mm -hmm. those are the people, I'll not say they are not schooled, I'll not say they don't know economics. Mm -hmm. What I'll say is uh, probably they decide to mm -hmm. misadvise the president mm -hmm. or they give their advice with hidden uh, motives. Uh, because uh, if you have to develop a country like Kenya, you need money. Our GDP cannot provide us with all the money that we need. Mm -hmm. You need to borrow. But now when you're borrowing, you don't just borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. Like uh, my friend here has said, eh? mm -hmm. if you need, it's like, I'll say I'll come back again to the house. If uh, you had a budget of buying uh, something in your home, maybe you want to buy a plot or a car, mm -hmm. and you decide that you will take a loan. The car costs 500000 if you borrow 700k, pesa alone sometimes in a kuaga tamu. <laughs> because in ingia kama imeshikana. Mm. And in the process, uh, you borrowed 700k and your car is uh, 500k. Remember, when you're doing your maths, you had uh, calculated how you will pay the 500. But now you decide what you to 700. See, mm. limit in Africa. Squeeze in imeskia watu wa kiesabu utajiri wao wana esabu pamoja na limits. Hizo <laughs> limit ya fuliza, limit ya tala, mm. and everything. Now, because your limit can afford you 700,000, you borrow. The 200K, itaingia kwa hiyo nyumba na itapata kazi. Mm. Now, unfortunately, i kazi itapatikana ya hii 200, haitakuwa infrastructural. Mm -hmm. It will be something like... Uh, Ay, wazi tumekula mboga sana. Waya sutafte nyama. Kanyama leo. Na, unakula nyama ya loan, my friend. Ulikuwa hapa sasa katrauza kame beat. Unajua nasikiaga mtu wakiwa na do. Nguwa zote uzeeka instantly. So nguwa zako zote zinazeeka because you have. And even at the public level, that is exactly what happens. You're living here someone with a two billion shillings which have no job. Hapo sasa, diyo kazi hupatikana. And this work does not benefit the common man. Then we are not calculated mm -hmm. how we will pay. Again, we, we are borrowing a lot of expensive mm -hmm. loans. In Hali, we are party to IMF, as uh, Jonathan has said. We are party to World Bank. So why are we borrowing from commercial banks in China and other countries? Mm -hmm. And then uh, some loans, eh? uh, there is something we say in economics that aid is very expensive. Sometimes you go there borrowing, and the economists at the treasury need to tell the president this, mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes the grants that we are given end up being very expensive. Uh, I can decide to give you uh, a loan today here, mm -hmm. uh, and tell you I'll give you 100 shillings at a 10% interest rate, and that is how you will pay. Or I tell you, 10% of 100 shillings is 10 shillings. Mm -hmm. Or I give you a grant in Meru. Mm -hmm. I run a transport company. Mm -hmm. uh, then ni kupatia mahindi bure uko Meru. But one it? condition is, eh, mm -hmm. you will have to use my transport company to bring this mahindi from Meru mm -hmm. to Nairobi. So in the process, you will spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on transport, which are benefiting now <laughs> uh, to cater for the for the free mess that I gave you. Mm -hmm. Sub-grants that we have received, they are conditional grants. We will supply Kenya with this and this, but now you have to pay for the shipment. Na hapo sasa ndiyo, sometimes tunashikwa. You have to spend mm -hmm. more than we could have used to buy, maybe from East Africa, mm -hmm. to bring uh, whatever you are given abroad to this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we will be looking to some of the statistics from the International Budget Partnership. And even as that comes, Jonah, you just mentioned why can't Kenya come back to commercial entities to be borrowed from within. Are these particular 
time and season or the period we are in. Mm. Do you think Kenyans, we are able to fund our infrastructure, we are able to fund our health system, education, everything? Uh, personally, I think we are not able to fund, without borrowing, we, can't, we cannot be able to finance all our needs. Mm -hmm. And, um, but borrowing excessively is not also a solution. Mm -hmm. Can we borrow Mm, uh, uh, some amount that we can manage to repay. Um, if I were the economist advising the president, mm, right now, I think uh, the beginning terms for us to borrow from the external, from the external market, mm -hmm. either the World Bank, IMF, or the commercial banks, is the revenue corrected by, by from, from our with country. Mm -hmm. So if we correct like, uh, for example, let's say we correct uh, 5 billion per day from taxes, from um, VAT and the others, mm -hmm. we should be able to say, if we, uh, if we pay the debts, how much are we left with? And how much are we left with after paying the debts and the recurrent expenditure? Mm -hmm. So that uh, if we Analyze and realize we have too much debt. Mm -hmm. Why can't you, the, 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 the fiscal policy analyst advise the president to, 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 res, I, to reschedule some loans mm -hmm. or even um, sell out the commercial loans uh, with the better beginning terms to, they can, we can even sell the, the expensive loans mm -hmm. to banks like IMF and the World Bank. Mm -hmm. If they give us another grace period like two to three years, and some better interest rate. Then, we, for, ex for example, the loans that we borrow to build the SGR and the rest, if it is very expensive, why can't the government sell the loans to the IMF for the World Bank? And then, because we have some money that we are correcting from our revenue, the economy is, Kenya has some good money, but is not well managed. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we are given like um, two to three years to start repaying the loans that we have been paying, we realize we have, we have started recovering because now the, the commercial loans are expensive than the, the others, IMF and World Bank, which we qualify so far. Mm -hmm. So if we have some money that we are correcting within, mm -hmm. can we discuss and resell out the expensive loans so that now we see if the economy is going to recover because we have to borrow either way mm -hmm. and then make sure the next borrowing it's going to be considered from the uh, cheaper direction. Mm -hmm. That way we can, because we are not in a very good place economically. Are, 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 are we Kenyans disciplined enough to pay our taxes? Because I, 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 I know majority of us, majority of us do not pay, we, 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 we avoid paying tax. Uh, and especially with the cases of unemployment in our country. Currently, Currently, the tax man is not joking with the tax evasion. Mm -hmm. All the non compliant with the tax man mm -hmm. is very expensive. So, especially most of the people are trying to comply mm -hmm. because the penalty is so high. And um, to some extent, most of, this, uh, most of the Kenyans pay tax mm -hmm. because they either rely with bus businesses mm -hmm. or the um, employment. So by the end of it all, the systems are very, very, very well. Currently, the, system, the tax month system is very well <laughs> organized. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Now, Job, looking into the current state from um, marketing the exports that we have and the imports, now, would, what would be the role of the government in effectiveness of a trade balance? Well, I think I will relate to your question on trade balance, or whatever you call balance of payments, mm -hmm. uh, to public debt again. Mm -hmm. And this is it. When uh, you borrow, you borrow in two ways. You borrow domestically. The government can decide to borrow from my friend here. And you will just go to the, the central bank, buy some treasury bills. Alafu ambia serikali nyi tumieni pesa for one year. Mtachukua next year. Now, in that case, 
the, the, the government here will have borrowed in Kenya and shillings. Mm -hmm. So, kama waliomba mia, next year nitalipa tu mia. Waliniomba na mia, nitalipa na mia. Mm -hmm. But now when it comes to balance of payments, uh, external debt is borrowed using other currencies like dollars, euros, and pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, when you borrow the money that way, any fluctuations on the strength of the shilling mm -hmm. affect the amount of monies that we pay back. Mm -hmm. And this is where now exports come in. Uh, if, we export, if we are exporting, we will export in dollars. Mm -hmm. Then we had borrowed externally in dollars. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we can use our exports to settle our public debt externally mm -hmm. uh, using dollars that we had borrowed in. And there the cost comes down a bit. Mm -hmm. But when we are not able to market our exports, when we are not able to increase our capacity of production so that we export as much as we can, mm -hmm. then it means we will borrow in dollars and pay everything in Kenyan shillings. Well, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in paying in Kenyan shillings, we, you will not give uh, someone in China or UK Kenyan shillings mm -hmm. is you will carry the Kenyan shillings, convert them to dollars mm -hmm. and pay. During conversion, maybe when we were borrowing, the shilling was at 100. Mm -hmm. But now when we are paying, uh, it's at 108 shillings. So we are losing 8 shillings mm -hmm. for every one dollar. Remember, we had borrowed a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Then we are losing mm -hmm. 8 billion in only one loan. So what the government needs to do we need to rework on our production. And the production, farmers, Kenya to kona labor, my friend, to kona everything that we need for production. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, do we produce to export? Uh, the export business has so many restrictions in Kenya. Those are some of the things that the government can relax mm -hmm. so that as many Kenyans can produce, we stop more of imports and start exporting. Now, using our foreign earnings, mm -hmm. we can service our debt using the dollars that we borrowed in to save on the cost of our foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I would like you to, to clarify on one thing, the, the terms of borrowing. Do we, do we pay as per the time that we, the, the value of which we borrowed, or we will pay at the current time when we are paying? You pay, you pay on the current the time you're paying. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's always advisable mm -hmm. uh, to borrow. If you borrow internally, mm -hmm. the, the time value of money does not apply. Because if you borrowed 200 shillings, we'll pay your maybe 200 or 220 shillings. But now, if I borrow today, I will borrow using the international rate of the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm paying two years later, I will not be charged using what was there in 2020. Mm -hmm. I will pay using the 2022 rate of the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now, to strengthen the shilling, we need to boost our exports. exports right. If we don't have enough exports, the value of the shilling goes down. Mm -hmm. So the government can cushion itself by encouraging a lot of exports. So that if the shilling today uh, is trading at 100 shillings mm -hmm. uh, with the dollar, even in 2022, let's have the shilling trade at 100 or even 99 shillings. Mm -hmm. there, if it trades at 99 shillings, we will have gained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, John, he has mentioned of, of, of exports and it, we are at a time in our country when tea sector, coffee, there have been problems. Uh, flowers are not doing so well in Naivasha. I remember during the pandemic what happened. And we have so many things that we would want to export. We have so many things we export mm. abroad. How can we increase our exports? And how can we have good marketing out there to protect ourselves or to cushion ourselves from growing so much? Um, one of the ways of encouraging export is by increasing manufacture, manufacturing mm -hmm. and encouraging manufact uh, business people or trainers mm -hmm. to venture more into manufacturing. Actually, the government can create incentives mm -hmm. or even a free tax period for us a certain, uh, when, when a company starts to manufacture, mm -hmm. we are given some in incentives because once you produce, mm -hmm. it is for the benefit of that economy. 
for, for, for instance, currently we are, we are, our exchange rate is around 110, 110, 108, 112. It means if we are not exporting anything, mm -hmm. we are in trouble. Because we borrowed maybe at 100 shillings, and now we are supposed to pay extra 10 shillings mm -hmm. on every coin that we borrowed. Mm -hmm. You see? So if we don't, if we don't encourage uh, production, which mainly is through manufacturing or even through farming, mm -hmm. I agree the government is trying because now we are exporting something like uh, avocados. But to what extent? What is the impact felt mm -hmm. by the export of avocados or even tea or even coffee? You see, with the time, the coffee, tea and the other agricultural sector have been depreciating the production and everything. The market is not very good. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, the main reason, but as far as uh, we are basically an agricultural based economy, mm -hmm. we should more, we should encourage more production of other goods. That's the, the only way we can manage to balance the trade. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, job when I was in school, I'm trying to forget, to remember this time, whether it's on paper or in the curriculum, but in the reality it does not exist. There's things we used to call commercial touches. We have people who will move from Kenya and go abroad to market our produces. Is that thing really working in this country? In fact, they are your neighbors. <laughs> 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 the department that is supposed to do that work is your neighbor, somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. And they are there, and they go and do that work. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, Saizi Hillary, mm -hmm. if you tell me, uh, in the end, in the market, Kahawa, from my village, somewhere in Meru, mm -hmm. I go and market coffee abroad from my village. Right. Which coffee will I market? Them says they are uprooted, the coffee, <laughs> because uh, our, our, our parents used to use that money to, to pay for our parents. Our grandparents used to pay that money to pay for our parents' education. Mm -hmm. But now what happened? When they realized the coffee has no... Uh, benefits again, mm -hmm. they are rooted. Mm -hmm. Wakapanda vitu zingine, makadamia, avocado, mm -hmm. wengine wakapanda nyasi ya ngombe, because at least milk, mm -hmm. utakunywa kwa ako, lakini kahawa uwezi vuna ukule, and uh, we do not have, uh, we have the ability to add value, mm -hmm. but uh, we do not do it. Now, the commercial attaches mm -hmm. are in this country. The Export Promotion Council mm -hmm. is somewhere. Every consular uh, that Kenya has abroad. That's all the embassies and all the uh, high commissions mm -hmm. have people who are supposed to market Kenya. And my question is, mm -hmm. when it comes to tourism, the people in charge of tourism are really marketing Kenya abroad from those uh, foreign missions. Right. Why are we not marketing our produce the same way? We put the same vigor. I think uh, one of the tourism bodies today has been nominated as the best to, to compete among the best in Africa. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have our coffee and tea expos being nominated to compete among the best in this world? The commercial attaches should be somewhere there drumming up support. Vile tuna gonga debe kusema Masai Mara ndiyo zinapita sasa kabla zifungiwe na hawa tu wanajenga huko ndani. The world beast are passing through Masai Mara. Kujeni sasa muone. Let's say we are producing coffee grade one in Kenya. Let, the, let, let them come and taste. Mm -hmm. We have a big expo in Kenya for people to come and taste coffee for free. And then they will buy from us. We have some of the best soils in this country. But our uh, watu commercial attaches squeezy. Wanachukuliwa namna gani. You know, it all boils down again. Uh, these are people who do not have, most of them are wana, unexperienced kwa ground. Mm -hmm. Wali soma hapa because they come from uh, well-connected families wakapatiwa kazi maju. But they do not know the quality of soils mm -hmm. somewhere in Mount Kenya where tea is produced. They do not know the quality of soils somewhere maybe in Nakuru where flowers and uh, pyrethrum mm -hmm. are produced. Now, if these people had the basic knowledge of how to market, like when I tell you, uh, let's pick something like uh, Mahindi. Mahindi planted in Ukambani tastes different from Mahindi planted in uh, somewhere in Cherangani, in mm -hmm. the Wasingishu, and uh, Transoya, all the, 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 the maize belt up there. 
Now, why is it like so? It's because of the soils, because of the rains, and because of the quality of seeds. Now, for you to market your maize, you need to have knowledge of from production to the time you harvest. Mm -hmm. Do our people, the ones we send abroad to market our products, work on experience their ground? Mm -hmm. Do they know? Ama uli chukua mtu amefanya international relations, ama marketing unampelega ku market. Why didn't you pick someone who has done something to do with agriculture to go and market? Mm -hmm. Umfunze marketing, atumie knowledge yake agriculture, aende aka market. So we need to recruit the right people for those jobs. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, Kenya tuko na potential. And uh, wanainchi ndio wanafawa jue hii potential, mm -hmm. itaishi kuwa potential if we continue with poor leadership. Exactly. So it uh, boils down to leadership and kind of policies that we have. Uh, thank you so much for continuing being part of us this morning as we look at the state of Kenya's uh, debt. And uh, your comments are coming in. Uh, please continue sending us. I'm seeing BD Ashley, she says, no, it doesn't benefit my fellow Kenyan. I'm sure she's talking about the uh, public, public debt. debt. We also have uh, Princess K.E. Good morning to you too. Ma Darasha Juja tuned. Government should stop borrowing money. As a, as a citizen, they are giving us unnecessary pressure with these debts. Uh, Fletcher Felix says, yes, Borazi Tumwe Vizuri, si kila wakati eti corruption, badalea kujenga taifa. Actually, we'll be talking about corruption and uh, the funds that are coming in. Um, Julius Gasheru says, yeah, because we have nothing due to cartels in Kenya. The cartels, okay. Sunko keeps on speaking about the cartels in this country. We have uh, Reds and Pisha. That's foolishness. They are borrowing money without knowing how they will pay. And if they get money, they can't give the youth jobs. Mm. That's a concern. Roy Pozik KE, no matter how much they borrow, but we never see the change. So no need to borrow. Let's settle with the little that we have. And this is on Twitter we have, uh, but his opesa zikikam, this is Emma James, he says, but his opesa zikikam zinaendanga wapi, because this year pesa zote zimetumika kwa corona na Jerusalem a challenge for our leaders ingekwa bora kujua advisors. Ha, Felix Moturi Mpendaregi anasema nani alipe hiyo mikopo? It is us Kenyans and they will keep on borrowing. John Mwalenga, no, because they, those money do not benefit Kenyans. Uh, Nile Shaka says, according to me, that habit should stop. Jua kuna kitu wana tusaidia na hizo do, wana kopa yes, but wana patia wa, wa China kazi ya taza. <laughs> Hazi tufaidi sisi. Mm -hmm. Ken M. Spita says it's not, but hata tukisa manini, the government can't and won't take any advice from us. Survive na ujanja yako. Hmm. Okay, so those are your comments that are coming in. Uh, please keep on co uh, sending us your comments or your concerns and reactions to this particular conversation we are having about public debt. And before we went, uh, I went to read those uh, comments. We were speaking about the commercial attaches, good guys for the right job, and that one has not been happening. Now, we have had for I think for the last two weeks, I've seen headlines on. Uh, local investors or banks, I should say, wanna say uh, they have been pressed down because you know government has been borrowing. Now, w w would you see the relationship that the government has been building with the locals in terms of borrowing is so good? And if wanna complain, sahi, can we even trust the government again, giving them our money? Come again. The, the, we have, we've had bankers complaining yes. uh, the, the government has been borrowing. Yes, they have borrowed because mm. actually during COVID-19 they borrowed. Mm. And we have that complaint. Mm. If they are complaining now because mm. Mm. Kunashide Akulipa, yes. can they trust the government again even as we look forward to us not borrowing money from IMFs and the a euro board to, tr to, to work on what we have within? Can, are we building the trust in the right way? If the banks are complaining, we are not building, the, we are not building any trust. And um, borrowing within our country, mm -hmm. that is, if we have no trust, by the end of it, or even the foreign countries will not be able to lend us. Mm -hmm. Because basically, it is we, the taxpayers, mm -hmm. 
we are supposed to pay the tax and then that tax paid on daily basis mm -hmm. is going to be used as the collateral. The government will say mm -hmm. we normally collect five billion mm -hmm. from the, our economy. So we can borrow extra how, how much? Mm -hmm. Like this amount. Okay. So if the commercial the local commercial banks cannot trust uh, cannot trust the government. Mm -hmm. The same case, the citizens will not be able to, to trust the government. And there is a way that the, the government normally borrows from, from the citizens by bond, selling bonds. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the central bank gets some money from the from the within. Mm -hmm. So if the, 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 the banks cannot trust the, the government anymore, mm -hmm. we're in trouble. How will we borrow locally? Mm -hmm. yes. So with the loss of trust job, what is the role of institutional quality in debt growth relationship? Uh, you see, the whole essence of borrowing internally mm -hmm. is to save cost, especially on foreign exchange, like we had said earlier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, the question on whether we can try the, 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 the maybe the banking institutions and non -finan not banking financial institutions, whether they trust the government, whether they should so, do so or not, mm -hmm. should not be a question. Number one, the, we have to trust the government. You see, the government operates with policies. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the government today says uh, to fung a mask kwa kifua badala kwa pua, you know, even before we question why we are <laughs> putting the mask on our chest instead of the nose, mm -hmm. then uh, we will have, kwanza utafunga, alafu uite press conference, ama maandamano ya kuuliza, kwa nini tunafunga hapa na si hapa. So the government has policies. But now, uh, the best business on earth is one that drives on trust. Mm -hmm. And the trust is very necessary. If we borrow internally, we save a lot of costs on interest rates mm -hmm. and on penalties that are charged when we delay in payments. And uh, the only way the government can borrow internally is through the banks. Mm -hmm. So if we do not encourage a culture of trust, in, in, and this trust goes this way. If uh, today I lend you 1,000 shillings, unaniambia utanilipa, kuna kabizi kamekuwa mamahali, unataka kuenda kuboost. Ni kupatia thao. Then, jioni tukutane na weta ao, <laughs> una umebeba box ya pizza, <laughs> na karoz flower hivi. <laughs> My friend, nitaanza kubabaika. Mm -hmm. Guy, who boss? Bila likuwa menshua na kuinua business and ilipe next week. Mm. Saizi pizza, mm. na hika low rose flower. <laughs> My friend, tutalipa aje. <laughs> Now, in that case, I will start losing trust in you. And next time you come telling me ni kuinua, hata ukilipa next week ni sawa. But high chance kama ni pizza hauta lipa. Juu kuinua busy. Now, next time when you come to me boring and you tell me you're going to pay, you, you're going to lift your, maybe to jumpstart your business somewhere, mm -hmm. I will not trust you. What will I do? I'll give you 500 shillings instead of 1,000. The other time when you come, I'll tell you, Leo sina doma zi. So, jipange. Mm. And that is where now trust comes in. The government has uh, uh, floated some bills through central bank to the Kenyans and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And the, the objective of this uh, loan that we are soliciting from uh, Kenyans mm -hmm. is to go and construct a windmill somewhere in Trukana to provide electricity uko at the northern part, ndio hiya kindaruma na kiamberi shugulikie Mount Kenya, Nairobi and Rift Valley. We should see that one happening. That we really bought these uh, bills, had bonds, and the government has went ahead, has gone ahead and uh, instilled a power mill somewhere in Trukana. Mm -hmm. Now that way, the lenders, the internal lenders now will build yeah, trust. trust yeah. But sasa, hiyo pesa tulipatiana ya kujenga huko, then unasikia but some supplementary budget imekuja kusoma mm -hmm. kwamba tutasimamisha ile project kimwarere <laughs> daro tutasimamisha <laughs> kidogo mm -hmm. uh, tushughulikie PPEs Nairobi then PPEs unasikia zimevuka boda na manga somewhere mm -hmm. hatuna so we do not have the windmill and we do not have PPEs hiyo pesa imekunywa maji imekunywa maji huko <laughs> kwa hizo damu mbili huko mm -hmm. now in that process uh, internal lenders will lose trust with the government and what will the government do? It will borrow abroad. Mm -hmm. Now, if it borrows abroad, 
then that debt is expensive mwananchi anaumia ndio mm -hmm. maana unasikia hao watu hapo wapenda rege kwa twitter wakisema mm -hmm. serikali siombe tena because the government has not shown them what they have done with mm -hmm. the money mm -hmm. but that guy if is in juja or somewhere in nairobi akuku hapo kwake hakuna dispensary serikali iseme today we are borrowing to jenge dispensary mm -hmm. mahali fulani juja we go they go ahead and borrow the money and then waende wajenge hiyo dispensary somewhere in Juja. Then this guy who used to tamak or to trek all the way to Dika or to Roiro to go to a dispensary, mm -hmm. a dispensary ambayo anajua ukweli gava iliomba nimekuja ikajenga. Mm -hmm. Then Kenyans will have more confidence in uh, mm -hmm. the government mm -hmm. borrowing. Actually, it boils down um, now go to co corruption cases. We've had one when you say mambo na corruption here. Uh, I, I don't know to, in your own opinion, Jonah, mm -hmm. I don't know to to what limit or to what magnitude do you say corruption has injured the uh, the rate of our borrowing and how and the payment as in would you say would you say corruption imi aribu everything for the borrowed money have you seen it being put into proper use um, the money has not been put into proper use first of all and um, Corruption goes along, is, is more related with the readership. Mm -hmm. And um, for instance, I think this year or last year, our parliament raised the, the cap, the borrowing cap, up to think 9 trillion? Yeah, 9 trillion, yeah. From 6 point something. 6 point, I think 6 point something to 9 trillion. Mm -hmm. Why did it do so? Was it necessary? Have, have we accounted for all the money that we have been borrowing in the past three or four, five years? Mm -hmm. So, what I would say is corruption has really affected mm -hmm. our development so far. But at the same time, our leaders should be very cautious with the debts that we have. Mm -hmm. Job, in relation to the corruption that we have, it has been a pandemic in our country. We're hoping we we'll get the virus very soon. And just like he's mentioning, of the, uh, it, is, it ends down to the kind of leadership. The terms of payment. It's true we have borrowed. Critics will say we have borrowed so much or too much. Are we in a position to repay our debts and maintain the, the standards of living of every individual in this country? Especially the, I don't want to say the middle class because actually those are the voters. No, allow me to say a big no. If there is someone <laughs> could, uh, if there is a way someone could speak in capital letters, mm -hmm. I'll say no. We are not able to pay the debt and service the lives of Kenyans. And this is it. Mm -hmm. You see, again, uh, Pia Kenya sometimes tunakuaga na mchezo. And you see now when, I st when it comes to corruption, it's very hard for me to maintain a conversation in English. These are points that are in kutoka kinyumbani because of the big pain that corruption causes in this country. Mm. Now, uh, let me touch on the nine trillion that my friend Jonathan has talked about. Mm -hmm. Hillary, let me ask you, why did we waste time in class six studying ratios mm -hmm. and percentages when our parliamentarians, people who are earning over a million shillings per month, mm -hmm. are advising the government or ratifying a government's decision mm -hmm. to put a cap using uh, what we call raw figures, nine trillion. We don't do that in economics. Mm -hmm. The best way to express your decisions, use ratios and percentages. Mm -hmm. The IMF mm -hmm. has put, uh, for all developing countries like Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, the cap is 30% mm -hmm. of your GDP. You should not borrow beyond there. Mm -hmm. Then Sasa, uh, our parliamentarians, put a cap using figures, uh, raw figures that he, we can borrow up to 9 trillion. Now, this 9 trillion is a percentage of what? Who told these parliamentarians that our GDP will keep growing? Mm -hmm. They should have given us a percentage such that if we are borrowing 30% and our, and our GDP this year is 1 billion, mm -hmm. to naomba 333 billion shillings. 
tukiendelea na ujinga unajua wanasemaga <laughs> ingekuwa si ujinga inzi mm. ingetengeneza asali and that is exactly the case for Kenya mm -hmm. ingekuwa si ujinga sasa hizi Kenya tungekuwa mahali Singapore and Malaysia and other big countries are mm -hmm. and it's because we have the potential but uh, Hillary these guys are telling the government or mm -hmm. they are ratifying a government decision that we borrow up to 9 trillion mm -hmm. what if our our GDP goes less than 1 billion will we still go ahead and borrow the 333 billion we should not. We should borrow. If our GDP now comes to uh, 720 billion, mm -hmm. we should borrow a third of that, mm -hmm. which is somewhere like to 40 billion. But now what uh, our parliamentarians did, wa Kenya tukiwa tunafanya vituko huku mitaani, tukiwa tunadance Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the parliamentarians came and said, mm -hmm. 9 trillion. Mm -hmm. Not a percentage of anything, not a ratio of anything, just nine trillion mm -hmm. now if they were sincere these people should have gone ahead and said now uh, as the government borrows up to nine trillion then the government should do one two three mm -hmm. to increase our gdp they didn't do that now the the corruption comes in here there must have been a reason why the mps did that who spoke on my projects they will not get kickbacks and we should not fear anybody we should not feel ashamed to say that uh, our debt is, uh, the, the money we borrow is being mismanaged mm -hmm. and for capital projects and that is where uh, any time kuna scandal Kenya, NYS, mm -hmm. utaona some MP, some senator, some minister supplied. You go everywhere. Mm -hmm. MPs, even in the finance committee, uh, supplied. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the, 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 mis the misadvisory comes in here, they are advising the presidency or whoever borrows to borrow externally mm -hmm. so that they get their kickbacks. Mm -hmm. If I borrow from uh, the commercial banks in Kenya, the, if I tell you the T-bill, the 91-day uh, T-bill is 10%, uh, that is it, 10% and you will give it to a Kenyan. But if you go to China, mm -hmm. you will tell them to party a 10 billion the CC company and huko itapewa contract. We have mm. tenderpreneurs, someone who does nothing. Kazi yake ni kubroka tenders too. Mm. Those people now collude with people in parliament, in treasury and everywhere. They misadvise the president. Now, this is what happens. When we borrow, easy pesa zikona conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, the conditions that we have that the government will give us food is in the constitution in the Bill of Rights, right to, to life. Na lazima mtoto na mwanainchi apewe chakula. Now, but you cannot hold the uh, wezi shika serikali ko mm -hmm. tilewa mku patia wase wa lokichar samu ya chakula. Mm -hmm. But China will come calling, surrender your securities mm -hmm. or pay our loan. Mm -hmm. The government will take the priority to paying the loans. So wanainchi wataendelea kukufa nja. Actually, uh, what we have here on uh, behind me is the percentage of the of the external borrowing and internal. We see it went. It, this is for the year 20, 2019. It went as low as 48 percent. The the internal borrowing and the external went to highs as high as 52.0 percent. If I'm seeing it right here, 52.0 percent. Mm -hmm. Is it worrying? To much percent as compared as within. Yes. It is worrying because um, external borrowing is more expensive than the internal borrowing. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to pay? Mm -hmm. What are the terms? Why should we not borrow locally, which is cheaper than the, the, the external, than borrowing externally? So that should be very worrying to us mm -hmm. as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Job, is it a worrying state? So if you look at that graph, eh, <laughs> that, that, that thing, that, that one is a leadership crisis. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling it a leadership crisis because look at, the, look at the years. The first year there, if I can see very well, uh, in that graph is 2012-2013. 2012-2013, was Serikali Anusumkate. Uh, uh, 44.5, uh, that is external debt, and then the internal debt, and let me tell you, those people who draw <laughs> graphs, eh, there is something about colors. Mm -hmm. Ata wale wanafunzi wako shule, 
they, they should not ignore colors when it comes to doing graphs. The red shows there is some danger somewhere. <laughs> it was not a coincidence that the external data is put in red. Mm. Yeah, it's called presentation of data. And the data presented in red there shows it's less favorable than the one in blue. Now, what is happening? In 2013, 2014, that is another government. 2014, 2015, same government up to uh, currently 2018, 2019. So what is happening? The red, which means danger, is, is going up. The blue, which means a safer zone, is coming down. And uh, you can see the V-shape from 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the 55% in 20, 2012 versus 44.5. That is mm -hmm. uh, the external debt we had. As we speak, in 2016-2017, Zilibadilishana. Mm -hmm. Now, we borrowed 52.1 externally and 47.9 internally. internally. Why would we do that? Jonathan has said here uh, external debt is very expensive. Mm -hmm. My friend, it's always easier. Mm -hmm. So, why are we ignoring loans from uh, within and running for debt outside. If you ask me why we are doing so, those people who have advised the country to borrow abroad have their hidden agenda, mm -hmm. and it's because it's possible to get kickbacks mm -hmm. from all the projects from those loans. My name is Nzuri, graph in Azungumza. There's another graph I'd like us to see. This is external debt service, which is growing, but erratically. Uh, I wish that would be posted here. I, I can see from what I have here, total domestic debt services, which went as high as 80, 76%. This is what, between 2013 and 2014. Mm -hmm. And when it came to 2017 and 2018, it went as low as 52%. But the, what we have here, this uh, uh, external, I, 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 want, I want the, the external debt service. Um, maybe if you get the other one. Yeah, so the external debt services, I'm saying it went as high as 76%. Uh, this was between 2013 years. Yeah. No, this one, the other one. But yes, we can still work with this one, yeah. You see, external debt services growing, but erratically. The service provided by the money that comes in. And this was uh, between 2017, 2018, and 2019. 2020, at our we could say about this year as we conclude our interview this morning, or our discussion. Job, what do you make of this graph? Well, this is uh, how we pay our loans. Uh -huh. uh, you can see uh, the internal debt in Agamane no nyingi na inalipo tu with a lot of ease up to hizo 76% unaona huko. Then the total external debt service, how much have we paid uh -huh. externally? Now, uh, in 2012 and 2011, uh -huh. we, we only paid 28% uh -huh. to external lenders. Uh -huh. Now, in 2017, 2018, and 2018, 2019, we paid 48%, which means eh, there was a 20% change in the amount of money we gave mm -hmm. to people abroad. Now, why this is a very worrying trend? Mm -hmm. It's because uh, if we had borrowed internally, then we paid internally, he pesa itatumua hapa to Kenya, mm -hmm. kusaidia vijana wetu, mm -hmm. kusaidia all the businesses in Kenya. But now what are we doing? All the money we are using mm -hmm. to pay, for, uh, to, to pay for, for our loads, we, has, we have started sending a lot of money mm -hmm. abroad. In 20, 2011, 2012, because your graph, you can see the two of them add to 100%. Mm -hmm. Tulikuwa na shilingi da umoja. Tulikuwa na shilingi miya moja. Mm -hmm. Ya kulipa deni. Mm -hmm. What we did, tulilipa 72 shillings uh, wako pesha juetu internally. Then tukalipa 28 shillings maju. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2017, 2018, what we did, we paid 52 shillings to our people and mm -hmm. paid 48 shillings abroad. 
that is 20 shillings more mm -hmm. than we had paid in 2011, 2011-2012. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing here is uh, we are getting our money internally, mm -hmm. uh, your GDP, na sasa tumeanza kuipatiana ngambo. Mm -hmm. So sisi tutabaki na nini. So at the end of the day we have nothing. Finally, finally, finally for this, uh, the share of total loans by sectors. Uh, this one we have, we have from the energy infrastructure, we have environment uh, protection, we have agriculture. Uh, this is the share of total loans by sectors. And I see there's, a, there's a, some, uh, what will I say, kuna, kuna sectors zimebaki too, they don't get much or they don't get little, they are still at the same point. Uh, from 2015, 2016, 2017 to 2020, a sector like the infra uh, energy infrastructure has got 80% from the money that comes within, still 80%. And until last year, uh, 2019, it had 65%, which was uh, uh, that the share that it got. Now, Job, uh, Jonah, sorry. In your, in, in your sector, because most of the money that comes in goes to the construction, to the infrastructure, nini, 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 nini. Mm -hmm. from the policies made by the government and the parliament, like we were saying, mm -hmm. do, 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 do you see any positive future from the policies that are made to protect the money that comes in? Because we have, in, we have, we have contractors, like Job mentioned, of tenderpreneurs, Watu wakuku wanasema tutatengeneza barabara ya Thika Road, siju kuenda wapi, and then mm -hmm. iko kwa books. Uh, the future is not very bright based on the borrowings. Mm -hmm. for, for example, uh, on average the amount of money in terms of percentage mm -hmm. that goes to energy infrastructure and ICT is 72%. Mm -hmm. When we invest in infrastructure and ICT and energy in terms of prof profitability mm -hmm. how much do we give at the end of it all mm -hmm. if the benefits are not coming um, in the short run after like 10 or 15 years that is in, in the wrong in the long run mm -hmm. are we going to benefit if no all of yes uh, assuming last year we borrowed um, mm -hmm. at 100 shillings per dollar, mm -hmm. do you know that we are servicing the loan at extra? If we are paying uh, at a rate of 110 shillings per dollar, mm -hmm. currently, current rate, mm -hmm. that means apart from the interest rate, mm -hmm. we are paying extra 10 shillings more mm -hmm. because our currency is not doing well. Mm -hmm. And that is where my concern is. Mm -hmm. And allow me to say something on this on this table here. Yeah. Na unajua sometimes tuna tunataka kusumbuana sana na vitu mingi. Mhm. Mm Tunafaa tujiulize hivi. Energy and infrastructure zilichukua 72% of the money we borrowed, si ndio? Mhm. Hizo mm 72% hizo barabara barabara kivyake inaweza lipa pesa ya loan aje? Hakuna mm -hmm. agriculture that can pay has Five percent. Five percent. Mm. Actually, sector, that's the question I wanted to ask. Mm. The distribution of the funds, mm. are they going to the sectors that can repay the loans? No. No. So, if you have a bar of 10 billion, mm -hmm. then you don't empower the Mira farmer somewhere. Mm -hmm. You don't empower the tea farmer and the maize farmer somewhere. This mm -hmm. is your bar of 10 billion. Kuanika mai kukimbilia marathon <laughs> and such things. Mm -hmm. So I think what we should do here mm -hmm. is a balance. Of course, we understand that the uh, public debt is meant for infrastructural project. But why can't we have the internal debt now mm -hmm. uh, improving other sectors like agriculture? Why should you build a road for the sake of building a road? Mm -hmm. Education should also contribute to, to, mm -hmm. pay, to paying that loan. Mm -hmm. But look at the share of education, 2%. Mm -hmm. but security, I think uh, 1%. Social and culture... Something recreation, like the arts that we are saying, uh, talent mm. will bring a lot of taxes for us to be able to service these loans. One percent. Mm -hmm. Barabara, 
And mm -hmm. it's all because these capital projects are giving money mm -hmm. to the entrepreneurs. To the entrepreneurs. Yeah. And, uh, and I think housing should be here because it is one of the big four agendas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> A project, we should be seeing it here. Others, thank you so much, gentlemen, for finding your time and coming here. Uh, if I could get your final thoughts very fast. I'll begin with you, Jonah. Final recommendations. Your final words on this. My final recommendation, this is what I could say. Let government restructure its loans. The, the advisors, the economists, the fiscal policy planners, mm -hmm. advise the president to restructure the loans. If we have, if the current government has been borrowing more from the commercial banks, mm -hmm. or the external market through commercial banks, like the Bank of China and, and the others, mm -hmm. advise the government also, if it is possible, resell this loan to bodies like IMF and the World Bank, where it is cheaper. And then again, for, for, for some grace period, yes? Mm -hmm. That way, because we are not very in a very good place economically, we're going to be able to, to recover. Okay. Mm. Job, your final words. My final words, death is not bad, neither is it very good. But with good management, death is good. So let Kenyans contribute to management of our monies by ensuring the right leadership is in place. All right, fair enough. Thank you so much for coming and finding time for us and for our audience to try to demystify the kind of uh, state we are in in terms of debt or public debt. And back home, thank you so much for your comments and staying with us. Continue keeping it away in the morning. I'll be back in a bit with another discussion. We get to know someone and remember it's related to what we began last week, matters career path. Keep it away. 254 Minimis, Dereva Hilary. Good morning.